Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the fifth time we've attempted to go live. This is Ivic Wolf, speaking to you from the uh, South African uh, hub of absolutely everything else. Um, and our guests this evening, guest this evening, is Tempo Okun, and my co-host is Scratch. Yeah. I am I'm... really hoping that it works this time. We are kind of frustrated at this point, considering that we've been trying to fix this for the last half hour. Yeah. Um, hi. <laughs> Hello, Hi. Internet. Hello, Tempo. How are you doing? Hi. I'm, I'm just sitting here drinking tea. I don't really... I haven't had any control over how this would go. So. It says nothing. Nothing is actually playing again. Still. Not, still nothing is playing. Oh, my God. <sighs> there are genuine issues here. Unknown yeah. source will transition to next source once Buffer has finished streaming. Okay. Walk me through OBS. Maybe I'll see what I can do. It's not, it's not OBS. It's, uh, it's Sam specifically. Because Sam picks me up. I'm going to... Uh, look, I'm going to go live. Mm -hmm. And then... I'm just gonna like give an apology so far. Okay. Um, yeah, wait. Uh, Brav wants to connect us now. Hold on. Okay. So you shut down quick. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, apologies for this again. We are running really late because we are having some technical problems. I hope you guys can hear us now. Yeah. Uh, try me out by Corona should be playing cur currently, but uh, it should be skipped. We, we should be transitioning this into this right now. This, welcome um, to the South Africa podcast. You're listening to Ivic Wolf. Uh, our guest this evening is Tempo Kuhn. And um, Badge can hear us. Can you hear us? We shut down quick. What's oh, yeah, no, we're up. 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 Fucking hell. Thank you. Okay. We're up. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Hi, Tempo. Welcome. Yeah, and th that's our guest, Tempo Kuhn. Hi. Wow. I was getting. I was. I was going to ask if I could do the intro because I've heard it seven <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Badge has started clapping his moves. <laughs> As one, that is the highest praise. That is the, the highest form of applause. The highest praise. <laughs> Can can I just get that get rewind like ten seconds so I don't have to hear that phrase ever yeah. again? <laughs> no, no, no. This is on the internet here. Okay, welcome to the uh, welcome South to Africa. This. This, this South Africa podcast. We are half an hour late because we've been having a large amount of audio issues. We do apologize for that, and I really hope that you guys are going to enjoy the show further. Our guest tonight is Tempo Okun. And this is my frustrated voice, if you guys have ever heard this before. I've heard this before. I'm about, I'm, I'm about to start crying. You don't know this by now. <laughs> but we're live now, so we can do the thing that we need to do. Yay! Tempo, welcome to the first podcast of the year. As you've been one of our longest running guests here, and we really do appreciate that you... Come on every single time, even though we do happen to have nothing but audio issues every single time. We do have you on. Go to God, you're our curse. We haven't but had yes. any video issues. Mostly because we don't... Okay. 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 Calm down. Calm down. Happy... Hi. Hi, everyone. So, uh, <laughs> I'm Tempo. For those of you who don't know, I write books and work on games and they always end up featuring talking animal people i hope you guys are okay with that um and i live in north dakota which is the most remote part of the united states it is up by canada um well, and i states, i wrote six is wild <laughs> i wrote windfall uh i worked on the nordgard card game and the lackadaisy card game um i've been in Every issue of Sofa Wolf's Heat magazine since issue seven, uh, so for the last uh, s seven or eight years. Sofa Wolf has been going for 14 years now. Yeah, uh, Sofa Wolf has been around since 
the 2000s at least they mm-hmm. they didn't even have heat magazine right away when they started they uh and now it's on its 15th issue they're making wow. so and so they've they've been around a while um they i think i think are older than rabbit valley and i know they're older than the current incarnation of fur planet and so yeah um anyway and I, I hear you guys got to distribute some of their fine products at your convention. We did, yes. Did we? So. Uh, um, we did. We did. I, when I sent you, like, Six is Wild and stuff. Yes. Yes. yes, that we yes. Did. So, anyway, those, yeah, like, that, that the Nordgard card game, blah, blah, blah. Like, those. Yeah. Uh, those are so full of things. Um, yes. So, anyway. Um, and so we had... Um, question in the chat from badge i could always just like read it out and then you can answer since um yeah for those of you who are listening to this while off doing the dishes and not <laughs> listening to it live uh yeah it was basically like uh that so but essentially the question was um there's nothing new under the sun like is that true mm-hmm in respect to writing at least um, in, right in respect to writing like um and really like that's the within I, you can tell i've been obsessed with rock dog for the last like two months because now i'm answering things in it like a very zen way but like <laughs> in buddhism there is when someone asks a yes or no question like when someone asks a question that we would consider a yes or no question you know, instead of saying yes or no, you are also, it is also valid to say mu, which like mu, which means basically like not applicable or the question is flawed. Mm-hmm. So like where we'd write NA on a form, they just, write, you know, they would answer the question mu. Like, so in, in we really what that is, is that's a like discouraging way of viewing the situation. Like, yes, I am not going to like invent a new like language to tell new stories in or something crazy like that probably. And even if I did like Tolkien, like he's still using existing elements. And so like in a way you can argue everything is a remix because you know, if I tell you a story, I've prob you know, someone has probably made these same sounds with their throat before in some um, other combination. But um, like the, actually, getting down to the writing level of it, like there's a sense that like there are only so many kinds of stories and that's not really entirely true. Like the more you like expose your mind to like, I find to new types of stories and things that would be outside of what you would normally read, the more you find that you will be inspired, not just to write things that resemble those but that you might write things in reaction to them that are different from what you find. And so, like, I I think that that's the main way I, uh, I look at, like, how do we approach, like, whether something is original or not? Like, can, you know, how can we make original things? Well, we can make orig- we can make cool new things simply by, like, exploring places that we haven't gone before because often when people talk about oh there's nothing new under the sun they mean i have been reading the same kinds of things for a while and i feel like i can't find anything new Hmm. in my experience anyway okay um but i mean like the thing is is that and it it does in honesty and I've, i've spoken about this before um it does move into that entirety of intertextuality uh mm. where the 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 story or at least the storyline itself may be very very similar to other storylines but the characters and the way that they interact with one another are in essence different mhm yeah yeah um as far as like so intertextuality for those of you who don't have a word a, word a day calendar is the concept that you can have stories that reference other stories and you know, like that aren't in your that are, that, are, that you are expected as a reader to have already encountered, and so like when you uh, when you 
like say watch a movie and the movie has a reference to another movie and that's intertextuality um but like yeah so uh, it, it, there is also a sense of like you know yes this story will eventually resemble something else just like an image that you know if you took a photograph and you plugged it into Google image search, it would probably come up with something similar somewhere mm -hmm. that would try to be similar. Does that mean that that picture you took has no value? No, of course not. Like that could be a fantastic picture. Um, it's just that the, the surface level similarities there make it easy for us to put it in a box in our minds that set, you know, all oh, things that resemble this, because that's how our minds work. Like we, we, we automatically categorize things based upon what we've already seen. Yeah. And so, yeah, you know, similarity is not a bad thing. It's just, yeah. you need to take things in a fun direction when you can. Yeah. Um, what's the word? If, if, if badge has actually responded again, he says that like both myself and Eva uh, and I have actually discussed this before that when completely stripped down to its base parts, everything is just a version of what has come before, and that all that he has seen is another way at its roots of telling the same story. Do you agree when stripped? Um, is this just but a skeleton of everything else, or ha uh, that, what the hell, of everything else that has been encountered? Have you encountered well these issues before? Um, so I don't really run into this problem, probably because I'm a dog and I don't really think overly hard about things like when I'm not, when I'm in the moment, like working on stuff. Um, uh. so I don't, I don't overthink and worry as much as some, as some people, um, mm -hmm. you could bring a Fox author on here and I'm sure you'd get a better answer for that one. But well, the, cool. the hmm? yeah, no, 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 cool. No, uh, we'll so, but as far as like, are, are, so essentially the questions, are all stories the same? Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, I mean, s sort of. Like, there are ways that we talk about stories when I teach creative writing classes that are like based around the idea that dog, like, <laughs> stories should center, or a story should have a person learn something or fail to learn something. Like, a per you know, that's that's a story. Yeah. And, okay, that's fine. Most stories do conform to that in, like, a vague sense. But, like, a lot of stories don't, you know, like, a fair number of stories don't. Like, there are plenty of stories where, like, the main character is the same at the beginning and the end of the story. Mm -hmm. um, another Another way to define what is a story is something that, you know, has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Mm -hmm. Um that's that's good too it's just how do you how then do you define those like you can put them out of you know oh okay well it starts at the beginning well not all stories start at the beginning yeah uh okay well what does a beginning look like what does an ending oh, look sorry. like you know stuff like that so i mean in a way we can talk about you know stories having common structure mm -hmm. um eventually that kind of gets down to like a cultural level of, like, mm -hmm. If you've ever had a small child tell you a story about what happened and had it be like 10 times longer than it needed to be, mm -hmm. that's because kids aren't born knowing how to tell a story. Like we as a culture have decided like, okay, this is how you encapsulate a particular sequence of events and that is a story. And so, you know, like, yeah, we can, you know, examine what makes up a story but mm -hmm. in in general like i would say that uh this is like my again i'm i'm slipping into dog mode here but i i i just end up writing things that are fun mm -hmm. and, and 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 generally people have received them well and so yeah. hello hello Oh, sorry, but anyway, yeah, that's that. Uh, so I just write things that are fun, and generally people have received them well, and so that's generally the course I have set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, works. But and and again, maybe maybe we're just taking this from a particular perspective in respect to what 
um, a storytelling actually is. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure that we'd be able to find a different perspective if we looked at, say, African cultures or um, Australian cultures or uh-huh. Asian cultures and things like that. And I mean, I obviously a large amount of people have this sort of affinity towards, say, anime and everything like that, where anime sort of takes the stories that we have had and makes them a lot more. Um, check that now. But just tapped me on the shoulder and told me to look at what's what's going on in respect to Fur.fm. I will look at that. Makes them, yeah. more, but you're saying how anime takes the stories we already it, know and makes it, them it, more kawaii, or not necessarily kawaii. In fact, like I mean, if you look at anything like the girl who led through time, or if you looked at anything from that studio, for instance, the girl who mm-hmm. led through time. Um, uh, what's it? Uh, damn it! But yeah, Wonderf- yeah. But the it, thing it, is, is it, that it, they, is, it, go they, ahead. Everything is better. From a Western, I mean, like we say Western culture, but the thing is that, like, if we look at anime, for instance, they seem to do a lot more, a lot better with human emotion than we've ever been able to do from a Western perspective. It's something that actually, like, kind of annoys me that nobody's picked up on this until, say, um, Steven Universe and. Hey? So, so are you talking about storytelling methods and Stere- characterization? Yeah, exactly that. Because the thing so, is that the characters in, in Western culture seem to be very generic. So mm-hmm. explain to me how we're beginning to move towards the idea that we're not as generic as we should be. Could be. Um, well, I mean, first of all, uh, like a lot of, like in every culture, stories tell you what that culture like prioritizes and expects Mm -hmm. from people and so if you're seeing stories from your own culture over and over and over and over you'll tend to encounter stories that within a certain degree of variation have some central themes so if you're from a culture that really like prizes individuality say um you know and like the the you know like it's important to express yourself and be yourself even if you know this you you are banned in like social responsibilities and norms um seeing that from like some group that is more you know some some culture that doesn't embrace that you know is more mm. collectivist that can that perspective shift can feel like can come off as a really like new angle on how to tell stories mm. and the thing too is that it's like being in, you know, the priority of, you know, how much, how, how important is it to be special? How should, you know, should you strive to be different from everyone else? Or should you strive to be part of the group? Like, those are things that are a different balance in every culture. And it's, that's an easy example, but there are also examples for like character stereotypes. So like Mm -hmm. how characters will behave. Um, And so for example, like, when we watch anime and we're like, what? This is crazy that someone would be a Sundere. And oh, wow, like, how is, you know, how can, what an interesting angle this is. Except that in Japanese culture, that is the most boring, worn out thing. Yeah. Like, just like we would be like, oh, I don't know, what's a, what's a cliche character in, that we don't really like in, that we would consider boring in Western culture, like every single the, evil villain that we've ever encountered. Right. So, like, you know, um, the 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 cackling, maniacal villain. You know, the mustache twirling evil villain. Okay. Well, that might be. What boring about the female us. version of that villain? Uh, you can you can get a false mustache. <laughs> the um, she doesn't have to be twirling her own mustache. She could be twirling other people's mustaches. No, that's um, villainous. That's truly villainous. Oh, Very oh, villainous. Oh, oh, oh. She has a has a minion on either side with a mustache, and she's twirling both of their mustaches. Um, and so anyway, the uh, but to like someone else outside of this culture, it might that might be interesting and novel. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, like that's. And 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 the other thing too is that like now that's a di- you know it's easy to see that as a difference between how another culture somewhere else in the world you know tells stories stories like 
our priorities just because society just as society changes over time how the stories we tell as a society change over time too so hence steven universe is a more modern take on how characters should act how characters should treat each other how genuine they should be to one another like um yeah. steven universe to me is in many ways the antithesis of like say family guy like yeah. a sitcom where everyone is mean to each other <laughs> Yeah, like nobody actually cares about one another. They just they just say really mean things all the time, and in Steven Universe, like the main characters all really care about each other. Like they actually like yeah. each other, and so they aren't going to like say something that's m- really cruel just because it's funny. And so yeah. you have to actually work a lot harder to give those characters things to say that will you know the audience will find interesting. But but. Isn't that necessarily sort of a, um, in essence, a either both drawback as well as an influence by, I guess, in essence, Japanese culture? Um, I, and I, I want to push this agenda, and yes, it is an agenda, that we've begun to become far more aware of the people around us. And what they've done and their cultures, in essence, have become sort of inculcated, is that the word that I want to use, into the way that we see things. We've begun to create our characters in a far more nuanced way than the, than, than the characters from even like five years ago or seven years ago when it comes to something like, you know, uh, mentalist or mm-hmm. and these are so on and so forth. These, these guys are very, very stereotypical. I will win at everything kind of things where in Steven Universe you don't always win and Mm -hmm. that was never the point to begin with Mm -hmm. uh, kind of character so first of all I I want to congratulate you on saying inculcated I would have said mixed Um, the uh, but yes uh, I I, uh, the the, uh, so as far as like what you're arguing is you're essentially saying that the modern day is sort of a, as, as far as fiction goes, the modern day is sort of a, like an intercultural fictional, like singularity happening. Like yeah. we are becoming more and more apt at having genuine relatable characters. Exactly. And so I'm going to say something that my professors back in college would have been prob- on, statistically offended by, like most of them would have been offended by it. Because uh, I'm a modernist, so I think that we get better at telling stories over time. Yes. Um, and so, like, I think that that's true. I think that just as we have gotten better at, like, you know, having, like, language get better, like, um, language say like the invention of the question mark the invention the invention of quotation marks things like that have improved language so too have we learned better ways of telling stories that you know make the character more relatable and all that um and also we've kind of i think also it's a it's a matter of social progress too like we have become more civilized over the course of the last 10 or 12,000 years. And so we're Mm -hmm. better at this stuff. Like we're, we are like, you know, we're, we're talking 20 years. We're literally talking 20 years where, Mm -hmm. um, people are beginning to like, literally look at something like friends and sit Mm -hmm. there going like, Holy crap, this is terrible. Right. And, and, and yet if you, when friends came out in the nineties, if you looked back at sitcoms from 20 years before that in the seventies, that you would have just went like, meh, some of the references are outdated, but that's about it. Yeah. And so that's why I, I kind of, I get what you're saying. And I think it's, it's, it's fair to, you know, it's like a, it's a, an exponential curve. Like it's a, mm-hmm. it's a more rapid incline. And part of that I think stems from the, you know, it's not a coincidence that this has happened in the internet age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I was, I was gonna because we've all, ago. because in the 90s, I probably wouldn't have been on your podcast. Fair enough, because we because, wouldn't have had a podcast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the equivalent would be. It would be running like a pirate radio station. 
But that 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 was actually that was all the way back in the nineteen seventies. Um, Furry dot FM actually bases their entirety of their existence as a pirate radio station for who and what they actually sort of think about and what they exist for. Like they mm-hmm. they they base a large amount of their perspective on something like the movie of the boat that rock. Yeah. And so um, the reason well, I think that the the, the the reason I think that it's coincided with this the internet is because prior to the internet if you guys can harken back that far um like if you think about what life was like before that we had the internet readily available you pretty much hung out with people who lived within a hundred miles of you yeah and like those i did would, those those people would affect our what do you call it um like our uh, worldview echo chamber yeah, like you would have been around people within 100 miles of you, and probably those people are relatively all of one kind of mindset or experience background. Like, they're all from the same area. They're probably from the same, like, ethnic background. They all probably speak some of the, you know, the same languages because they all have to interact, you know. So, like, it's not – they all tell the same kinds of stories, the same jokes, you know, whatever. I mean- um, like uh, you, you're you're talking about that. I mean, like the thing is, is that 1990 between 1993 and 1997, obviously I was in America for a while, um, and for about I think two years of that stint that I was there, I was in a public high school, and then I went a uh, high school. I said primary school, uh, and then went to a private Catholic school, for instance. But mm-hmm. my perspective didn't didn't change because the cul-de-sac that I lived in didn't change. So the people that I worked with and the people I worked with, the people that I interacted with were no different. They were all generic American children, in essence, um, from Maryland. Um, and it, 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 it's weird that the first thing that I had to deal with when I came back to South Africa and went to a, a primary school in South Africa, I had to deal with my first out of being called a racist, for instance, mm. um, because and this is this is a story that I don't necessarily tell lightly, is that one of my interactions there, p- particularly because again the schools that we went to were primarily white, but black people existed and they were just there. They were people. Yeah. Yeah. And for some reason, it was perfectly acceptable to just trade insults between one person and the other person. And yet, yep. when I traded my first insult, which happened to be calling a person who was calling me out, who was calling me a whole bunch of weird things, I called I called them a black bag. I'm not okay. very, very proud of this. And again, like this is me when I was like, what, 1997, that is 11 years ago. I was... Is it 1997? No, that's 21 years ago. What the hell am I even talking about? Yeah, that was a while ago. How old was I then? I can't remember. I'm turning 30 this year. So everybody else do the math. I was that young. Um, And at one point, there was a teacher that came to me that grabbed me by the lapels of the shirt that I was wearing and said, what the fuck are you doing? Like being this racist. And I sat there going like, I don't know. I don't know what the Mm -hmm. hell you're talking about. What is going on here? And Mm -hmm. immediately, like, obviously, from there on out, like, things changed in my perspective. Things changed in the way that I actually considered how I should be reacting in things like this. Because South Africa is still a racially divided country. And will, at least maybe up until the point that I'm 40, maybe up until the point that I'm 50, up until the point that... People who are born in the now begin to understand the idea of what integration actually means. Um, Mm -hmm. Will begin to sort of suss out for themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 kind of the point that I'm coming to is is that like we are learning, and we're learning a lot faster through the means of Twitter, through the means of you know whatever social media that we have right now unless we cut ourselves off from all other social media, which has been happening recently on Twitter. Um, 
It, right. If you if you can always run back into an echo chamber like you mm. would have had in the seventies or whatever. But it still it's it still influences us, it influences us, our storytelling ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take this opportunity to lead into some of the questions that have been asked, and one of them is by Atwolf, mm -hmm. um, who has recently been reading Fang, and yeah. he's been truly enjoying some of the stories in there. Uh, he's actually been toying with the idea of writing a gay interest piece here in 2018. Um, he may, he says that he may fail miserably, but he'll uh, still find it a very good exercise. So okay. he says that you are very good at writing, personally. Oh, so thank you. Th there's your compliment. But straight erotic pieces. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you could pull something like a gay erotic piece of um, is it something I've, that you would consider oh yeah well i mean i have, have um okay. in in just not in anything that i've sold but i've i've written uh like gay and lesbian and like various menage a trois pieces for like uh fan fiction stuff mm -hmm. um it's a little bit more difficult for me simply as a matter of like well, two factors really like i'm 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 bi but i'm not like i've only ever dated women and so like there's some ah. like actual practical experience stuff that i would have trouble with like that i would have oh okay you know whatever uh that like i would have trouble conveying just because i haven't been through it and then there's also like there's an th another factor that causes me to write a bunch of straight stuff is that the furry fandom is a really cool place for fi like as a haven for LGBT people, and that's that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and so we get a ton of male male stories, and a lot of them are really like encouraging and hopeful and all that. And we don't really get a ton of straight stories that are that encouraging and as you know positive. Like a lot of them are like if you look at like the the numbers of stories that get submitted to say fang or heat like um they have over an, like an overwhelming majority of gay stories and then they have a sizable chunk of straight stories and then they have like a tiny amount of lesbian stories and mm -hmm. so um since i can write straight stories with like some reasonable level of authority i have been choosing to focus on that. Uh, mm -hmm. If I had come into the furry fandom and no one was writing straight stuff, I probably would be writing a bunch of gay stuff, like gay and lesbian mm -hmm. stuff. Um, <laughs> like, and and that's that's just kind of because I I can I can't find those stories. Like one of the main drivers for me is in in my writing is I can't find the story that I want to hear. I'd better write it myself. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, that's that's actually pretty amazing. Um, Badge has been commandeering the general live chat here <laughs> with um, with gushing. No, not even gushing. Just like questions of if a character is the same at the end as the beginning, would you advise writers that if they want to write a stable character? that by the end, they aren't viewed as stale while containing the very core of the character you started with, question mark. So stale meaning that they feel like the same, like they haven't learned yes, anything? that they haven't okay. learned anything. Um, so, I mean, first of all, people don't change radically from one day to the next. So, you know, even if something really interesting or really traumatic or really pivotal happens in your day you'll still you'll still like chocolate tomorrow <laughs> like you will still you know uh have similar taste in clothing tomorrow and mm -hmm. so things like not everything changes all at once for people that's, that's 
really, really not how people work. And so since, uh, like, so it's effectively how I handle that is, you know, I establish the character in the beginning and I show a variety of traits that that person has. And then mm-hmm. one of the traits, you know, usually it's like, it, I don't usually write stories about someone, you know, changing their taste in music. I usually write there someone changing their like point of view on the world or like becoming more comfortable with something. And so it's more abstract, but like um, what that then means is you show them at the end still being the same person, still enjoying the same thing, still having the same manners of speaking and whatever, but it's all now filtered through this new lens, this new perspective they have. And that's how you tell people, hey, this is the same person. This is how they've changed. You should examine your own life and see if there are ways in which you should also grow this way. Because, mm-hmm. you know, hmm. like, if a character, yeah. like, so radically changes, then I, was, then I suppose that it's supposed to be the kind of, like, shock to the system that it's – that um, – uh, that would pull the reader in and like really leave them going whoa at the end of a book more so than like, I wouldn't say make it more relatable because like you said the average person doesn't change everything about themselves in a course of a week or something right but, but I'm thinking like at the end of 1984 minor spoiler alert like that is the the way that the character changed there was meant for a reason and that's the reason that like the character is far less powerful than he thought it was initially. You're right. Yeah, it's a pretty um, point, more so than anything else. Yeah, and and even in 1984, the character has like the word choices he uses, the like things like that, like the the experience, the like the background knowledge that he has doesn't go away. Like that yeah. remains the same, even though he's changed his entire worldview. Mm-hmm. Mm. So. Yeah, anyway. Valerian. Ugh, Valerian. What the hell? Um, sorry. Tempo. Mm-hmm. Uh, Badge has pretty much just said, as authors go, this is honestly the best answer that he could have ever he could have ever asked for. Oh, well, thank Aww. you. Um, <laughs> see, so and honestly, like the, the you know one of the things I end up telling students a lot is there's really not like all, I'm going, you know, I, I often start my classes with, I'm going to tell you a bunch of things that in retrospect will seem obvious because there is no secret sauce. Like there it's mm. so much of writing is and storytelling is if you think about it, how would this actually go? You know, like that's really like the, the work that one puts in as a writer, like, how would this actually turn out if this, these, you know, things were happening? You know, if uh, in in Star Wars, it would be like, you know, what what would be life be like if we were living in space and there were also wizards? Mm-hmm. You know, mm. so um, like that's, you know, like so so when I come in and like fight, rattle off something like that, it's it's simply because like I've had good conversations with friends about you know like these where i've been like oh well how would i approach that how how do i deal with this particular issue in storytelling or what have you yeah question yes in respect to the stories that you've kind of alluded to in respect to your other side of the spectrum um, is there any place that people will be able to find these? I'm assuming they're going to be on your Fur Affinity page. Uh, yeah, my, my Fur Affinity and my Sofury are both like primary accounts. So mm-hmm. here, I'll put them in here in the chat. But um, mm-hmm. the, the they're both like my, my main accounts. So they have mm-hmm. all of my stories. Okay. Um, aside from the ones that are only, that you know, that are, uh, yeah. that are, that are, right, that are in, in, Mm-hmm. So, um, anyway, yeah, uh, those would be the, the places to check out those. And then you can find links to buy my stuff if you yeah. want. Um, I would, I think an ebook would probably be the most cost effective way. 
yeah. having yeah. having shipped things to you guys. Yes, yeah. having shipped um, things to us. We we understand what the price of that is. Yeah, <laughs> but um. So anyway, um. It looks like he was asking about Nordgard too. Uh, yeah. There's a very unique set of characters. How would you describe the creation and selection of the original set of characters? Um, well, the the to that end, the the game came after the graphic novel. Yeah. And so the characters were actually already established. So like, if you're asking like, how did I pick which characters would get to be player characters? They were already the main characters of the book, and so we just, um, you know, we we checked that each of them would be, you know, that was, we, we, we double checked that each of them was going to appear in subsequent books. <laughs> and then we uh, said, oh, okay, let's, let's figure out a way. So it actually came, it kind of from how you would normally do it. Because in a story normally, which is, I think, the more general question, like, how do you determine what characters should be in your story? Um, so when you're when you're telling a story like the, of, of something that happened to you in real life, because we're all storytellers, we all tell like, Hey, what happened to you today? Oh, this funny thing. Let me explain what happened. So when you're telling it for real, like just because it's something that happened, um, you might list people, you know, characters who were only bit characters or characters who, you know, played similar roles in the story. But if you think of how a comedian tells a story that's not probably exactly how that story went down like mm. they might say it say they were out with a group of five friends and encountered something funny and all five of them made little funny jokes about it or something they might drop that down to like two friends and just give all the dialogue to those two guys <laughs> um and that's how they tell the bit like that's how they tell the story in stand-up and that's actually closer to how writing works um you actually have permission to whittle it down to what is the you know who are the characters who really need to be present for me to tell this story mm. you know and so you have to start looking at your character chemistry interaction and interactions you have to start looking at how you know, who is your main character going to be? You know, what what traits does he or she need to have to go through this, you know, story that I want to tell, like to experience the transformation I want to have them have, have them accomplish the goal that I think would be interesting or all, you know, whatever. And uh, then I, I usually come up with a, the main character first. Um, and then the... I don't like fully form who they are, but I kind of like, oh, we need to have this in the story. And then I start assessing like, who would, you know, is someone opposing them? Is there an antagonist? Is there someone helping them? You know, is there someone they talk to, to, you know, explain things to the reader, essentially, like to have someone they bounce ideas off of. Um, in fantasy stories, that's why so many like, wizards have familiars they can talk to oh. because then you can explain what your internal thoughts are as a wizard thinking about magic to an, to someone else who will interact with you as opposed to just going out and doing wizard things and the readers trying to put the pieces together for how the world works and how magic works and what the char what the main character's motivations are and all that um and so Anyway, um, so as far as like who you want in your story, like I'm, I'm kind of a minimalist. Like I try to have, if I can get away with having fewer characters for a particular story, I will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just as far as main characters, um, now that's not the only way to do it. Like you can have huge casts of characters. You you know you can have you know, uh, I don't know, like Game of Thrones, Wheel of Time, things like that, where people there's just a ton of characters, and it's actually easier mm -hmm. to do that in, uh, you know, visual media than it is in a book, because you can just give someone a distinctive look, and then they'll know, oh, that's so and so. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't remember who that is, but I remember that you know, she she was you know the little girl with the sword, 
and so you know whatever and then uh so like that's why when when you hear writers talk about like oh i combined these characters like this happens a lot in like um television and movie and theater scripts they will combine characters just for the sake of having fewer people for the audience to remember Mm -hmm. um that happens in writing too like we, Mm -hmm. we say oh well do you even need to have this many characters because it's simpler to tell a story with fewer people in it like, um, whatever the message is you're trying to convey with this additional character, is there someone not similar enough that will have the same worldview to just give that trait to them? Exactly. And so that's um when you watch, say, Star Trek, that's why the or like um any really any show that has an ensemble cast that has like five to seven main characters who know everything about everything between all of them and do everything. Um, that's why like on Star Trek, you know, the captain or the first officer is leading a, you know, an away team down to the planet and not like, yeah. you know, some other person, because we already we know how this person is likely to react. We know what their skills are. We know what their knowledge base is. So that's what you, and you know, like, that's why you end up with, and then there's the rest of the crew and they don't really do anything on these yeah. shows um and so that's because they've they've said okay well we really you know we really only have seven characters on the starship that has a crew of hundreds yeah mm. so um i have a question here from kit Traden as well as uh, trace um two actually two, two people who have been uh i think very very good friends of the south africa uh, both South Africa as well as the South African uh, community as a whole. But um, Kit asks, uh, or says, cool meeting you at MFF. Uh, what kinds of things would you like to write more going forward um, that you feel haven't explored as much yet? Um, well, I can stand to write some more lesbian stories. <laughs> the fandom doesn't have that many and i haven't written that many um but i've also been working on uh like since i'm i'm sappy and i write a bunch of romance stories i've been Mm. like toying with various stories in which i would write like pauline relationships where like you know there's like three people or something like you know like something Mm. like that because it's i've been avoiding it not because i'm like opposed to the idea of like different but, styles of relationship but mostly because it's more complex mm. because you'll have if you're saying like, say you're writing like you know a menage a trois or something where people you know like all three people are just totally down you know down for it they're totally in with each other they you have to have instead of one character dynamic like one set of character yeah. chemistry you have to have three yeah because you have to have it between each of them yeah and so you have to essentially write three relationships instead of one to convey one romance is, so is, is that in particular to um Kyle gold's recent sort of twitter expose in essence of his own relationship or not uh, this is actually a couple of years old. I've been writing old. Jack and Daxter pornography of this. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> fan fiction always comes first. Um, if, you know, don't be ashamed of writing fan fiction, everybody, because you can just like so much of the world is already there that you can just jump right in and practice things and try to emulate character voices and like the tone of the setting and all these other things that you would not normally do. Like that's why so that's why all of my fan fiction is I am not going to write you an alternate universe. I am going to write you something that feels as true to the original as I possibly mm. can. Because as much as I'm writing this for people to have fun reading, I'm also writing it mm. to develop my skills as a writer. And so, you know, say I write uh I was writing Dog City fan fiction a couple of years ago. Uh Dog City, by the way, is like a cartoon made by jim henson and it has it is a like noir detective show but it's also everyone's a dog or a cat Mm -hmm. 
and it's 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 ridiculous and it basically like makes fun of all of the tropes of like the yeah. hard-boiled detective genre it's a, it's a and so about a cartoon about a detective show yes it's very meta um uh, and so Ooh, meta and so um it's very avant-garde um <laughs> sorry so, so many overused words here meta and avant-garde yes. avant yeah avant-garde dog <laughs> because he's a German shepherd um, so uh, I was writing fan fiction of that and I basically had to like research a whole new way of writing character dialogue because if you guys have read or watched like detective movies like mm -hmm. the private eye someone comes in you know like the the beautiful client comes in and talks to the private eye and they just have witty banter the whole time i had to learn to do that in a convincing way like i'd never done that before because real people don't always have the perfectly witty thing to say yeah. and so if you read that like fan fiction it's on my for affinity if you read Ooh. my or my soul furry uh if you read those people like the two main characters are just like wham bam boom like constantly bantering mm -hmm. and it's not realistic it is as fantastical as i am a wizard and i can shoot lightning out of my hands nothing it's, better than that right like no one can really do that like and so it was something i really had to like research and watch movie yeah. notes and figure out how to do it and mm -hmm. um like when you are th this applies to any like fan fiction or whatever I, when you are learning to like when you try to write it in such a way that it looks like it, that it could fit easily into that world you have to explore like how like say you're writing a fan fiction of regular show regular mm -hmm. show is the most like plain spoken show yes. like that's the language in it is incredibly casual yeah and so you have to like no one in that show is going to make like a beautiful complex metaphor about something like nobody in that show is going to like have a poetic moment, you know, straight faced. It's going to be as I, a joke. It's going to be, a I, I literally, I, I literally think that the best way that you could probably say that is, yo, want to have sex? Right. Right. Yeah. Like, there's a little you know, more that's how, to that's how it would go in that. Yeah. Oh, 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 sorry. There's nuance to them. Yes, there are. There is like <laughs> the, yeah. Um, and so, anyway, you'd have to have dude in there. You'd be like, dude, yeah. you want to have sex? Mm. But, um, Is that the only nuance, though? That's yes. the nuance there. Yes. But, um, so, you have to, like, that. that's why I enjoy fan fiction as a writer. Like, that's why I write so much of it and post it online. Yeah. Is it causes me to have to spread my wings and try new stuff. Um, as far as, like, uh... So, like, what I would want to write more of, um, I've been mostly, like, my current projects are that um, I, w I want to, like, I wanna, I'm going to continue, like, the Six is Wild and Windfall series. I'm almost done with the, I'm still almost done with the Windfall book. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but the... Russian ready for 2019. <gasps> no, it should be out this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The, for the 2019 awards though award season right uh and so i'm also working on a uh let's say i just started a mashup of uh like robin hood legend and like reynard the fox which since they're both from the like 1300s in europe I am I am starting a story that is a mashup of those structured in such a way that it would be the theoretical origin point for both stories <laughs> as a spiritual successor to me which is what authors call a ripoff of <laughs> uh Disney's Robin Hood. Yeah. Like we'll make him a fox. <laughs> like we'll make everyone else an animal. Like we'll just tell this story of Robin Hood and simultaneously tell the story of Reynard and it will just be this. And, you know, 
how would you know how do these two like how do these two literary canons interact like how what are the commonalities here like what traits do you give people like who do you hand the parts you know like hand those roles to Mm -hmm. um so stuff like that so i've been working on that um i've been and like the reason i wanted to do it is because i don't really i've never really written stories that are like I've written things that are historical, but not they've always been something I'm already familiar with. Mm-hmm. Like I live in the U.S., I live in a rural area of the U.S., so I already know about like Western and cowboy culture. You know, I was raised on a a horse ranch, so like I kind of know. It's not that much of a leap for me to write about what was it like in the 1890s, mm. and so then, like, um, you know, like windfall set in the in in like you know maine on the canadian border i'm like i live on the canadian border i've been to maine several times like i you know my illustrator lives just north of there in canada yeah. so like it's it's not that like i i can no, ask him hey what color right right mm-hmm. i'm like slate what I, like he got he got really confused one time because i was like hey slate what color is the dirt what co- and he's like, what do you mean? It's dirt colored. I'm like, no, 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 no. What color is the dirt where you live? Like, can you look outside at the dirt? Is it like brown? Is it like black? Is it like tan? What, are, what color? Like red? And we're talking hex about And he's here. like, be specific. Right, tell me. And he's like, uh, let me look at my shoe, I guess. And like, because I, you know, like, say you're where, you know, you're in North Dakota where I live. Um, the like the dirt here the dirt where i grew up is like pitch black it is like the color of crude oil really and when i am he- like now that i've lived now yeah, i live like oh uh 5 hours drive away in the middle of the state instead of on the side i the dirt here is like kind of brown and i'm like oh it's kind of when i moved here it was like it's kind of weird <laughs> and like it's just different colors everywhere and so you know, little stuff like that, like write what you know, like you have to research it. Yeah. So having to, writing something that is further removed from my context is fun. Uh, the other thing too is that I, aside from like Disney's Robin Hood, I've never really found Robin Hood stories that I'm like pumped about. I'm like, man, like there's so much more that you could do with these characters in the setting that would be really interesting. And like, like, a lot of like them the are kind of experience between Robin Hood and Little John. Thank you very much. I'm please. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's been done. That the people oh, have fuck. had. Those. That's I been done. I want from you though. There's nothing new under the sun. Um, <laughs> and so, the uh, Robin Hood's the ultimate example of that. Um, I actually was studying up on the origins of uh, like the Robin Hood mythos. And, like, they found people who, oh, this guy was named Robin Hood. Oh, this guy had a similar life to Robin Hood. Oh, whatever, like, different people. And the further back, the, they kept finding references to, like, Robin Hood prior to the lives of these people. Hmm. And so they're like, well, what does that mean? And eventually the conclusion that they came to is uh, at, like, the yearly, like, May festival in in villages across england they would have these like stock characters slash you know uh like druidic religious figures appear and it would just be a guy from town in from the from your town in a mask and it would be like i'm showing up i am the green man i come from the forest i take from the rich like I, I hit up the rich for money and I give it to the poor people in town and then I'm off to the forest again and I take off the mask and I come back as someone else and it's kind of the first suit rules okay. and this was called the green man and there was the queen of the shepherdesses and those turned into Robin Hood and Marion and <laughs> so like so if you ever see like in in like European art like a guy whose face is made of like leaves or he has leaves coming out of his mouth that's what that was um and so it's one of the few things like that we know in detail that the druids had as part of their religion because they didn't write a lot of stuff down 
And so this is one of the things that survived the influx of Christianity because people were like, well, of course that happens. That happens every year. And so they kept doing it. Yeah. And the thing was, they another name for the green man was Robin of the Wood. Uh, and this is like in like the 900s. And so, yeah, like it's so like in a way there's always been a Robin Hood. That was the thesis of this documentary I watched. Like there's probably just always been this, like that's just a thing that human psychology wants to have happen. Like the commoners want a hero, you know, they want equality, like economic inequality. (laughs) And, you know, (laughs) that's, isn't that interesting? And so like, I want to strip away all of the like, centuries of repurposing this myth into you know into like something that'll serve the political purposes of the time because people would be like well he's 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 in favor of this king or he's in favor of he's opposed to this or whatever like in a ton of robin hood stories he's super (laughs) anti-church like because the church was like a main landowner at the time there there, there are some there are there are some arguments against this uh vanda says that he doesn't agree or badge doesn't agree with a green man reference as a pagan. Uh, and this is a lot to do with the idea of the false appropriation of culture. Robin Hood was never a green man. I'm not saying that he was per se, like literally the same, like any, any story like this has multiple influences, but yeah, like <laughs> the, <Sanity. laughs> what, who? Nothing. What's what's that thing that you just mentioned? No, I'm sorry, it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. it's but like, anyway. Yeah, you know. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I was gonna be offensive, but continue. No, we we're always offensive, but do continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, go ahead, Tim. But I'll get to that when I'm when you're done with your story. I so, have a lot of questions here, by the way, that I've been like pining up. Okay. Um. But yeah, basically, like, the, I want to, like, and then like Reynard, if you you guys aren't familiar is like the a fox character is like the one of the fir, er, the earliest like written <laughs> furry stories yeah that we have and he's basically a trickster fox who's kind of a jerk yeah but, and, 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 and and yeah sorry um i'm just i'm just gonna like refer to the things that badge has been saying here robin of he's the talking Hood. about maypoles was literally the definition of a man who steals virginity. Uh, Hood uh, being the reference to the word that I can't necessarily say here of a female anatomy. And then Vagina ref- is... Yeah, I guess that, yes. And he's also a cad, according to Sudan. A fanic reference to the maypole and the fact that all he stole was woman's... Was woman's... Woman's is... Oh, yes. So, <laughs> so like... The May Festival is the one we're talking about. Like that's, they have had them forever. The Maypole is often like everything's a phallic thing in anthropology, mm. yeah. and so like you can because like the the traditional like May festivals were all about like fertility of the crops, fertility of the people, blah 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 blah, and mm, so fertility of the people, oh. right? And so. <laughs> Mertility. Oh, <laughs> um, Go and so, home, please. <laughs> Sorry, um, anyway, and so, yeah, like, and the thing is, like, the origins of this are really, like, obscured by time. And so, hence my, like, desire to have this be, like, an interesting theoretical origin point for it. Um, anyway, so, so, as far as, like, Rainer, to give a quick so, uh, like synopsis there like reynard is a like trickster fox character who has a like has various like interactions with other like animal characters who female animal probably characters. existed in or the oral tradition long before it was written down similar mm-hmm. to robin hood which is fun fact robin disney's robin hood was originally disney's reynard oh and that's why he's a fox mm-hmm and that's why he's incredibly attractive because they had a ah. long time to develop his character design. Too, 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 too long a time. 
Okay, I just, I just, I need to ask this question before it goes very, very way up in the live chat. Now, Dean Koontz, Stephen King, Wilbur Smith, every single one of them are powerhouses of literature that could face slam a keyboard at this stage and have the best. Uh, who would you, as Tempo, equate to having the same power in the furry fandom? I don't know. Like, it's... The if we if we're taking the question like literally, mm -hmm. um, the, like you know, I am sure that Price, like Price slam is very derogatory. Right, right. Like, can't, can't, like I don't I don't know if we really have someone in the fandom like that. Um, Kyle sells more books than I do, but even I don't I don't think even he could just like release something that he just kind of like threw together. Like he could, and it, he could sell stuff, but it wouldn't be like award-winning amazing because th there is a certain amount of like knowing what your audience wants and like putting in work to make it original and putting in you know making it fun and different um so i mean i understand like i, sh I definitely share the frustration that to be a successful author you need to have been a successful author already to some degree like in order to make a living selling books, you need to make a living selling books already. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's true in art, that's true in film, that's true in all sorts of creative endeavors. Um, mm -hmm. Because we have this tendency as people to say, okay, well, you know, the... Uh, like th I, I, you know, that thing must be good because everyone already likes it. Like I, you know, all of my friends are watching this TV show. I guess I'll watch it too, because they keep telling me how good it is. It must be okay. Um, and so yeah. Mm -hmm. The we did. You said you had a uh, other questions. We can rattle them off, and then I can get to that. Was that was literally one of those questions? Um. Uh, actually, uh, one of the things that I do want to uh, mention is that the Ursa Majors are coming up as well as the, you you know this this term a little bit better than I do, the... Um, Coyote Awards? The Coyote Awards. Uh, for those of you who don't know about those, you guys can actually go to the websites and vote for your favorite novels. A Coyote is more geared towards literature as well. But the uh, Ursa Majors themselves are geared towards multimedia uh, in respect to what's being given and so on and so forth. So, so you guys yeah. have anything that is there that you would like to um, nominate, do so. Um, we're going to put the Ursa Major, at least, uh, link in the link here. And then if you could just pop, pop the, pop the Coyote Awards. I'm not sure if that is actually open to... The coyote, the coyote awards. By the way, you'll notice that I say coyote awards because mm. coy coyote is just the. It's an it's an earlier and a more obscure transcription of the Native mm. American word for coyote. It's it's perfectly valid to say coyote oh, coyote or coyote awards. Um, in my book, the uh, it's a furry writers guild thing, and mm -hmm. the uh, I would I. Because uh, if I try to say that L, it just comes out as the Coital Awards. <laughs> and so, and I, that's not always true. Uh, although I, I, I sitting here, I'm sitting here in my office and I'm looking at mine, and mine is for best mature novel, so never mind. Um, but yes, uh, so if you are uh, interested in the things that you could nominate that I have made... <laughs> Uh, I have a poem in the newest volume of Heat, and I have uh, s uh, stories that have come out this year. So, like, uh, or like last year would be on my FA that you could vote for. Um, now, th the the thing I voted for in mm -hmm. the Urza Majors mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. as as like movie of the year mm -hmm. is Rock Dog. How did I not guess this? <laughs> favorite movie. This is my favorite movie of the year for 2017. Bar, bar none. And, and here's the thing. Is it because Eddie is in there? 
Okay, Eddie Izzard's in it, and Eddie Izzard is always really funny. Yeah. Um, so the thing is about Rock Dog, like Rock Dog, as we talked about with other things, like Rock Dog comes from like a weird perspective. Like we're not used to stories like Rock Dog because it's like a Chinese movie made by Americans, and so like it's financed. It was financed entirely in China, and it was released in China first and all this. So it's got all these and it's like centers around a Tibetan and like all this weird stuff. So we're just not you used to. You've watched Rock yeah. Dog without me. Quit. I watched it. I watched it high. Okay. Well, apparently somebody's watched it both sober and high and they said it's terrible. Anyway. So that movie, so that piece is awesome. So, Carry so, on. so I would like to point out that the movie is not it. Like, I, I think its biggest sin is that it's not Zootopia. <laughs> is I think the sin problem. Is it's not Zootopia because because Zootopia came out and we all had our minds blown in 2016, and then now other things have come out that we would have previously been like that was a pretty fun movie. And we're like, that was that didn't challenge my entire worldview. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't catastrophically aroused by the main characters. What kind of film was this? <laughs> and nearly, so nearly <laughs> And because because like the thing is if I feel like if Rock Dog had come out before Zootopia, we would have all just been like, That was a pretty fun movie. I like that movie, that was pretty good. Like it wouldn't have like we blown wouldn't, our like, mind blown our minds it's not that kind of movie but let me blow your mind in a minute about it so mm -hmm. but like we would have all just been like oh okay like that was a pretty fun little movie but because it came out after zootopia we were just like well i'm jaded now apparently its biggest sin is being poorly written so okay i'm i'm just waiting for you i to have i have talking. first of all i have i, I have I, created i have corrected all of the problems in the film's writing with an erotic fan fiction you can find <laughs> on it. Deal. Done deal. Badge, 30 seconds. Wait, 30 seconds. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> so, um, and the, uh, now the thing is about Rock Dog is that I, it, it probably just got too many revisions. Like, it, it was, it had too many revisions and not enough polish. And that mm -hmm. happens with a ton of kids movies. Like they get kind of like someone at the studio will be like, well, you can't have this happen or we shouldn't have this happen or whatever. So for example, like I am like 90% sure that Dharma and Bodhi hook up in some previous version of the script mm -hmm. <laughs> because she is constantly like super like nice to him when no one else is is says like constantly tries to engage with him he's you know like she talks about how he's like cute delusional but cute like uh the uh the, the thing is it, the like and then the song at the end has like it's like a weird almost love song like he's talking about trying to find someone and so yeah like I, I think that they uh, totally hooked up in a previous version, and then they said, "Oh well, we don't need to have that element. We'll drop." Fair, fair enough, but the thing is, is that now, as as Badge puts this, so you rewrote it from scratch, because God's alive, save from the two solos, it was a load of poop. So, <laughs> okay, I I also want to take this moment to point out that in the age of the internet, we as we as a culture, like as a species, we have we have decided that. Everything has to be mind-blowingly fantastic or rubbish. <laughs> yeah, like we can't give anything a B anymore. Like we can't yeah. be like that was a pretty good. That was pretty fun. Yeah, and if we like, do it's then, like RoboDog. RoboDog would have gotten a B in my like. Um, if if it ever was released, RoboDog would have at least gotten a B, and I would have been like relatively uh, happy with watching it. It's like watching right. the Croods badge. It's like watching the Croods. I think. Right, like here's the thing. Like S Stephen King actually had a really good take on this, which was P 
someone asked him like you know what his writing is like what what he how he thinks of his writing and he says i make baloney i don't make caviar <laughs> i make baloney because everyone kind of likes baloney mm -hmm. like it's okay. not the most sophisticated thing in the world it's kind of, it, but it's you know it's not the most like it's not revolutionary it's not going to challenge your perceptions of what a sandwich is but it's fun and it's good and everyone kind of likes it and so that's why he's successful and so the uh like i think that that's one thing we have to keep in mind is that under this deluge of not only more media than we've ever been exposed to but more media criticism than we've ever been exposed to mm -hmm. i think that we have this tendency to react to that by saying okay zootopia was amazing everyone agrees it was amazing oh people are like you know rock dog that wasn't as good therefore it was tr just absolute trash like yeah. that's because that's the kind of thing that when you say that online like if i went on twitter and i said rock dog is terrible you know and i said some i said it in some clever funny way that would get a lot of attention rather than if i went online and said rock dog was pretty fun i liked it it didn't like change my life forever but it was pretty fun and it was cute mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people would be like huh that's nice yeah. that's um, like, um no but scratch yeah I think, and the idea of like score inflation as well it's you you'll watch something that gets like a nine out of ten or or even like an eight yeah. out of ten, but as soon as it boils yeah. down to like a seven, you I'd already, watch a seven. You already start judging it. It's like, it's, uh, like you you have to either be like on the very far end of the curve in either way to like be able to filter through the the other garbage that's on the internet. I mean, garbage is the other everything that's on the internet. Like there's there's a college humor piece on this. Yeah, but essentially, it's something has to either be so, the best of the best or the worst of the worst to be able to yeah. stand out through all the noise to make it worth your time, in most cases. So, again, Badge actually says the following, the weird, paranoid, neurotic cat is the best part. If I could Gravity Falls erase my memory of it, Tempo, you guys made Nordgard, and you are moved by this. Insult is a crap Pixar drunk short. Okay, so another reason that I want to bring up in this that we as a fandom have been calling Zootopia or sorry sacrilege have been calling uh, rock dog bad is because it isn't made for us it's not we are not the intended audience that's very true of I can agree to this I actually can agree to and because I, I, Zootopia was 100% ours. Like, Zootopia is made for furries. As down. Like, it is, it is made by furries. It is, they, they, they snuck out previews to furries. Like, it is a furry movie top to bottom. It, it is an entire Rock city Dog. made around talking animals with brands that we know made to be furry. Yeah. All the things that we ever wanted. Exactly. And so, whereas Rock Dog isn't. Rock Dog is cute, but it's not like uh, the the thing is. It's cute, but it's not like made for us. In not just a like, it's not made for furries. It's also not for Western audiences. Like it has Eddie Izzard in it, and it's funny and cute, and that's great. Like that's supposed to be enough to get a pass in Western cinemas. Most Western cinemas. But like, because you could show like if you because it's a kids film. Like you could show Rock Dog to a kid, and they'd be like, "What a fun movie!" But yeah, um, the thing is, it's also not for Western audiences. And I would argue that it is one of the most subversive films in Chinese history. Of course. Actually, much agreed. Because the... Okay, okay so history lesson. 
Tibet doesn't like that it's part of China. That's, that is true. Um, and Tibet did not voluntarily become part of China and would like to stop being part of China, and China is not crazy about that idea. <laughs> and so, the, ta- the like China overall has a very strict policy about how Tibet is supposed to be seen. Like they're supposed to be seen as kind of these backwoods people who aren't sophisticated and they need to be brought into the 21st century and they should be thankful and all that. And they've really brutally repressed the Tibetans to keep them part of China. And the thing, so like very, very rarely in Chinese cinema, do you ever even have anybody mention that Tibet exists? And so, even though it's like a third of the country, and so the thing is that if you like stop for a minute and examine the fact that the most expensive animated film ever to come out of China is not only about a Tibetan, but doesn't but portrays him as like completely heroic, and that that his culture is really, really like interesting and valuable Hmm. that's catastrophically amazing like that's just like china like you'll notice that this is even though this is the most expensive film ever financed in china like animated film it was only released in a handful of theaters they Hmm. tried to bury this thing because it portrays the tibetan like this was a huge blowout between rich people in china because they some had financed it and some were some owned the you know movie theaters and they like had this huge blowout about it because rock dog is like the most subversive Chinese animated film ever because we're not supposed to feel positive things about Tibetans. So so essentially rock dog just has this like very quiet, continuous whisper of fuck you in the entire movie. Well, and so, so the thing is like the, the, the cruelest that, rock dog ever really gets to china is saying when you're in a big city in china people don't really have time to listen to you if you seem like a crazy person Mm -hmm. and that is a pretty mild rebuke yeah you say that about anyone everywhere you could say that about any city anywhere and so um if you now now however on the flip side like bodhi is Hey, super Tibetan. Like he, no. he is what? I'm not, I'm not I'm not sure if you're watching the chat right now, but uh, Badge has decided to say that the main character is at least 87% high and stupid throughout that film. I'll get to him in a minute. However, the goat is totally on drugs. The drummer goat <laughs> ah, fair enough. is totally a stoner. Um I don't know how that flew in a kid's movie, especially with, yeah, like, drug flew, policy in China. It definitely flew. Again, yeah. But again, don't, so, let, don't, like, monks sound high if you try to have a decent conversation with them anyway. So, so right. No, I was going to say, like, the thing about Bodhi is you never know in the film what combination of naive and zen he is. <laughs> Um, you you we never find out throughout the whole film how what what ratio of like lucky fool and enlightened master Bodhi <laughs> is supposed to be uh, that, that because is he goes through the thread. it is and Bodhi goes through the whole film expecting the absolute best of every single person he meets and never really getting discouraged and never giving up, never even really being phased by bad things that happen to him. And I'm like, I watched this movie and I'm like, Oh my God, I can't tell if you're stupid or like mm. the most enlightened person. <laughs> Cause like, I can't even tell. I'm like, probably both. Hashtag master Uguay. Right. Like, right. Like what is, what is Uguay's thing? Like, no, and, I'm just and, saying that Master Ugo is no, high. Not involved, Why are you okay, arguing with... Carry on. So, as a compare, compare this film, if you will, to Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> Why was Kung Fu Panda fun? 
because it was a different setting and different whatever different viewpoint than we normally get and so similarly rock dog is fun for me because it's not meant for me like it's not from my culture it's very different and so like i had to look up what a what bodhi means <laughs> like because like bodhi is like a concept in in buddhism that like it is the like enlightenment you have as like a teacher of like a buddha like has bodhi and like dharma is like the rightness like the or the lawful order of the universe so like the person in the film who comes to epiphanies and brings them to others is bodhi and the person in the film who explains the just way that the world is supposed to work is dharma this is uh, this is the kind of revelation and, uh, that i had when i realized that every single name in the chowder animated kids show was the name of some kind of a food ingredient or food in general yeah <laughs> and so how did you not notice that from like the first episode like, i only like i know like snitchel snitchel and chowder but like from there it was like i didn't know what the hell mung doll or endive was like who, who knows uh, these things off my so, heart so 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 anyway um Raj says now, that he's hurt by you so so anyway i'm not telling you yeah. i'm not telling you that rock dog is better than zootopia i'm not telling That's you that it doesn't that it is like a perfect film what, 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 you're you saying, what, what you're telling bad is that like rock dog was good i i had so much fun watching that movie <laughs> I, I I had so much. It was so much fun, and like that doesn't mean that it was that it asked a ton of questions, and that it was super deep, or even that like, because like the whole like take take the plot with like the wolves. What the hell? Why were the wolves trying to eat the sheep? What kind of weird vor world is this? Fair enough. That this is happening, and so like, um, yes, to answer your question, like Dharma. Dharma is the way to go about living is, is one way that it is translated. Yes. Um, and so, but anyway, uh, <laughs> the, the, it's the Dharma thing and is, Greg, oh, no, oh, Will and Grace, oh, Dharma and Greg. This is Will and Grace. <laughs> anyway, yes, Will and Grace are also traits and in addition to being characters. Yes. Um, so anyway, I'm not telling you that like rock dog is the same kind of creature that Zootopia is. And I think that that is why we like, why the fandom didn't latch onto it. Like they did Zootopia. And so that being said, I had a blast watching this film. And so I was like, boy, I want to know more. Like I'm not Tibetan. I am not a Buddhist and I don't know anything about anything about besides what I've been able to go online and read. Mm. And so I'm like, well, I'll just, I'll, you know, I'm like, I, I write for culturally aft. I'm like, <laughs> I'll do a culturally aft episode on, on, on rock dog. Why the heck? Why, why wouldn't I? And, and so I went, I, I contacted um, a, a, a professor I know through, or like I, a, a friend of a friend who is a Tibetan studies professor. He's met with the Dalai Lama. He's like done all these things. I'm like, you've okay. literally spoken to them. I want to ask you, how did that go? To the, the oh. who, who, what? You, you to, spoke to, to the what's it? The the the, the Tibetan Council, something like. Long so long let, me, let me let me let me let's backtrack. So, so this, so I I contact this professor first, who is like a Tibetan studies professor, and I say, hey, whatever. You know, I'm a cartoon dog on the internet, and I I am writing for this show. Uh, I would like to know more about this rock dog movie. And he says, "Okay, you know, what do you want to talk about?" I'm like, "Well, here's here's the trailer. Here's this, whatever." Um, I'm I'm curious because the main character is Tibetan, but the movie's Chinese, and he's portrayed positively and he says so he emails back to me and says so 
I can't talk to you about this film because it's too political. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my god. Mm. And he's like, he's like, I can't talk to you about this about Rock Dog because if I tell you what I think about Rock Dog and China finds out about it, I will not be allowed back in China. Wow. And I'm like, oh. this is amazing. <laughs> this is gonna be good. <laughs> Right, right. I'm like, oh, right. Like, I, 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 I just strut over and pop out my folding chair and sit down because I'm like, I'm like, what is this? What is happening? And I'm like, this is a silly movie about a dog who plays guitar. I want to know why China's so mad about it. And so, like, I'm like, okay, for real, I will. I, I so I, I contact another Tibetan studies professor and I'm like, hey, you know, like, getting kind of you know, just some feedback trying to figure out what's going on oh sorry like same deal i can't talk to you about rock dog and i'm like no this rabbit hole goes away what do you mean and i'm like what do you i'm like pulling at the thread i'm like what do you mean you can't talk to me about this dog and they're like oh well you know i would be concerned that the chinese government would ban me from the country because they already don't like me because i'm a tibetan studies professor if I told you what I think of this film and what its implications are for Chinese culture. And I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> like, wow. so, so I contact the, I contact the like singer who sings Bodhi's songs, Adam Friedman. And I'm like, Hey man, can I interview you? And he's like, sure. Oh, and wow. So I'm like, because I'm telling him, like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm doing some of the research and it's getting a little weird, like mm -hmm. some perspective. And so um, so I'm going to be interviewing him. But in the meantime, I'm like, OK, well, who? And he doesn't seem to have like a ton of background on that. So I'm like, OK, well, it seems like they just brought him in to do the song. And I'm like, I can't really get a hold of other people who are on the production. And I'm like, OK, OK. So who do I who can who in the world? would know about Tibet but doesn't give a shit what China thinks and I'm like I bet the the Dalai Lama's home office would know because there's the Tibetan government in exile oh, God. oh yeah I'll ask the Tibetan government in exile so I did and I'm like hey guys are you familiar with the rock dog no okay well do you want me to mail you a DVD because I think you should get on board with this. Um, oh, there's no Tibetan translation. I will tell you what. Why don't you let me interview you, someone from your government, and I will help you translate everything. Oh, good. Because I've worked on localization teams in the past. I'm like, I will totally be half of your translation team if you give me like a bilingual person. And I will make like this into a module because they have like schools in India for Tibetan exiles. And I'm like, I will help you do this i will make a like module about how this works and for you to have in classrooms but you mm -hmm. need to be i need to interview someone about this so i know what the heck's going on Holy so shit. now we're gonna see what that turns <laughs> into i, I want to help with this i'm sorry i do dude i I'm. I kind of think you're gonna wind up on a hit list at some at some point. So, so the thing I is, I don't mind getting killed questions. by Chinese people. So, so, so here's the deal. I, first of all, no I'm one outside of North Dakota is really sure that North Dakota exists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, like when when China finds out that I have posted on a furry YouTube channel about the subversiveness of Rock Dog. And decides to like take me out. I don't think that they'll be able to find North Dakota. No, no. And so, <laughs> and it's so also really far away. away. Like they'll be like, I'm not, I'm not going to North Dakota. So that this, that would just, and plus, like you know, any anything that they would do would only draw more attention. Mm -hmm. But yeah, 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 in all honesty, I am in a great position to discuss the foibles of the Chinese regime because. Oh, wow. They would probably ban me from the country anyway because of all the. Uh, so it's yeah. not like I have much to lose. So because, sorry, because of all, all right. the what you cut out there? 
Furry porn? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, then. fair enough. All right, that. All of the wow. It's it's amazing that that was the one thing that actually got out. <laughs> so, but yeah, so because like the Chinese government would take you know, assuming they have the capability to know instantly everything I do, they that means that they already know about all of this furry erotica. <laughs> and if talking about rock dog is the thing that tips them over into saying, well, I don't know this guy. Yeah. So uh, I th- the, 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 there is a point here from Vanda or Badge again. So he, he pretty much says something along the lines of, but let's not compare it to a super movie. Let's compare it to the unadulterated milking that Kung Fu Panda 2 and whatever else of that heinous series follows. Kung Fu started at amazingly and became nothing but another Minions style friend. Sell out. I actually, I, I, and I thought Kung Fu Panda 2, likewise, was fun. Like, it wasn't revolutionary, but it was no. fun. And that's okay. No. Like, sometimes it's okay for a movie or a book or a song or whatever to be fun without changing the world. How dare you? I know. And so like when you, like it's it's like a pop song or something. Like if you hear a pop song and you're like, "Ooh, it's catchy. I can't get out of my head. I like it." That song probably stop, isn't stop, stop, going stop, stop. to have the same like impact on society that like a song that like, you know, you know, uh you know, imagine all the people live in life in peace has. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's okay to have fun. It is okay to have fun things. Mm-hmm. Like the movie is fun, and not everyone has to like it. But I thought it was fun. Yeah. And same thing with Kung Fu Panda Two. I'm like that movie was fun. What the heck? Why not? I watched like, all three of them. I found all three of them fun. Yeah, like, and that's okay. And I know that now. That doesn't mean that I want to write insubstantial things. Like, I want to write things that resonate with people, and I strive to do so. Badge probably makes a relatively good point here by saying that Rock Dog wasn't bad, but it wasn't even hiding its engineering to to sell seats in it. In what way? In what way is the question. So, do answer, and I think we can probably sort of semi and uh, what's the word, end on here. Because we've been technically busy for more than two hours. So let me and, let me fire through yeah. the other things I wanted to talk about. Fire, fire through them. Go for it. Okay. Uh, so the uh, like we just had so a year ago I was on your program because mm-hmm. we just had the largest protests in U.S. history, mm-hmm. and now we had protests yesterday that were almost twice as big. Damn son, mm-hmm. what was the protest? About? Yeah, we went from. 3.3 million to 5.2 million it was, estimates. It was pretty much just the women's march, wasn't it? The women's march. One in 100 people in the United States were marching yesterday. Jesus. <laughs> like one point, it was like 1.5 percent of the population was outside marching yesterday. What was, what was the occasion? Like I, I was gone this week. It was literally just the women's day march. They hate no no. They, it, it's because Trump is sexist and they want to get rid of him yeah so they're they are having a women's rights march because he keeps he he like is a groper of women and like says terrible things about women and is trying to take away rights to abortion and things like that and you know he so in response like the women of the US and some guys who are okay, like me, I like to think, are like that's terrible and marched. And so the the thing is, we have an election in like two hundred and some days. <laughs> and this movement has, has gone from large to very large in the past year. And so it's it does. It didn't get as much press as the government shutdown that Trump accidentally caught, or sort of accidentally caused, because he's an idiot. Uh, because that's way more dramatic in the news. But the bigger thing in the long run will be the fact that millions of people 
like marched in the streets. Like there are only like 300 million people in the U S five, like more than 5 million of them were marching yesterday. And that isn't a thing that will end when Trump goes to jail. Like that will continue forever. Like as long as these people are alive, they'll be like, Hey, what do you think of like conservatism? What do you think of like Nazis? They'll be like, I marched against those. Like they will never support things like that. You know, what do you think of like white supremacists? Oh, I marched against those in my, you know, in my youth or whatever. And so I think that's significant that we have, we are a year in and the only thing the Republicans passed in that entire year, the only thing Trump, the only law Trump got passed was a tax cut, which is now being challenged by the courts. And that's it. He, there were no other laws like that with the rest of it was just like renaming post offices and streets in DC and stuff like that was it. Like that was the kind of thing. So the, the, I think that's fascinating. Like, and it's not just the fact that people in the U S have been opposed. People in other countries have been opposed to Trump and mocking Trump and like threatening from their countries. And this has rippled out into all of the racists in the U.S. are now, like, having a light shown on them by people in other countries, too, who are like, that's not okay. Like, like this crazy, like, you know, oh, what was it? The Ugandan Knuckles meme that years ago people would have been like, ah, whatever. But now people are like, that's kind of racist shit that you just tossed out there. Let's, uh, let's not do that anymore. Yeah. And so like, you know, um also I wanted to talk about the fact that Disney just bought 21st Century Fox. Yeah, that's Sorry, wait, 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 wait. Disney now owns pretty much Fox. You didn't know this. So Disney Disney what? has bought 21st or 20th Century Fox. Yeah. And now like, what that means does, is... Does that include all of Fox? Yes. No. Hmm? No. It. What happened is Fox News has lost so much money because of Trump. <laughs> they, have, they are selling off all of their animation stuff and rights and movie rights. Damn, like son. the larger Fox Corporation. Woo! And so Fox News will continue to exist independently because Disney didn't buy that, but they bought everything it. else. Yo. And so like they now own everything from like Anastasia to like aliens to Anastasia to aliens to the Simpsons, uh, to Futurama, to fucking Simpsons, everything. Futurama, fantastic. Mr. Fox, mm -hmm. uh, that other translation of my neighbor in Totoro that doesn't have Dakota Fanning. Hmm. hoping for a double release for the audio so I can have the non-Dakota Fanning. Nothing against Dakota Fanning. I grew up with the Fox version of the Tortoro movie, and I want to be able to show that to people. Hmm. Um, so, the... Uh, uh, I, uh, I want to show you guys this... Where did it go? The cover, that magazine cover that I was talking hmm. about. Um... You sent Here it, it is me on Telegram. I, I will put it directly into the chat. So this was the cover of The Hollywood Reporter. Uh, it won't let me submit links. It was I empty. See it. I see it. it's, it's here. It's here. Oh, okay. Anyway. It's on the uh, furry.fm group. Oh. There you go. So anyway, the, the, uh, so The Hollywood Reporter had a weird, like, vor-themed furry cover. This week. What? Okay. <laughs> it's my favorite picture now. But look at this. <laughs> is this a thing now? <laughs> so, so for so the Hollywood Reporter is like an industry magazine for Hollywood. It just talks about stuff in the industry, and in the picture, for those of you you know at home is a picture of uh, Mickey Mouse 
with a foxtail sticking out of his mouth sitting at a dinner table. Okay. He's with himself. Right. Like, hmm, okay, that's weird that I have a fox in my mouth. Um, to imply that fo- that fox has been gobbled up by Disney. By the Disney I think con- this is... Conglomerant. Is this, the, right. is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, okay, it's a mixed bag. It's kind of bad that Disney will be our, like more of the main game in town for movie stuff. Like, that's oh, not... Oh, hail the Lord and Savior, Disney... Right. Mm-hmm. And so like now that's that's not inherently like the best thing because it means that like the you know, it's harder for little studios to compete and all that. Yeah. Now yeah, yeah. that being said, Disney made Zootopia. <laughs> yeah, but And they are like and Zootopia, for example, or Frozen or anything like that are pretty progressive movies. <laughs> like those are not movies that like the not the Nazis of the world and the Donald Trumps of the world would be would really get behind. <laughs> and so like that's why you know like the Nazi furs in the fandom tried frantically to like make to to steal Zootopia and like makes oh we'll we'll get a whole, we'll draw a bunch of terrible art of Judy Hopps as like a Nazi. And mm-hmm. it didn't take because it makes no sense because she's not See. anything like that. Yeah. And so, but they want, because they fear this movie because it means that it is the Zootopia is the death knell of fascism and yeah. racial equality. But it should because, have been like a long time ago. It should have been the death knell in 1940 fucking five. Right. And so like, so, so, but Zootopia is the, is a nail in the coffin of racism. Yeah. Because, so, uh, it yeah. is it is teaching kids this is how, you know you should be aware of and strive for, you know be aware of race and strive for equality and like all this stuff and be and who you are be who you are yeah be who you want to fucking be yeah in any case um badge does say that he apologizes to you uh, it does need to be noted, however, that anyone he respects or admires is not above their personal views and what they broadcast. Tempo sounds true and honest, and even though you and him disagree over Rock Dog <laughs> vehemently, on right? certain points, vehemently, yes, he remains, or you, in essence, remain a positive influence. I'm glad. So, so... Um, it was an it was engineered to sell tickets in that relying on influence music popular. So basically, because it had pop music in it, like yes. it has what rock dog? or or is that the is that the, the main complaint? I'm, I'm I guess? not necessarily sure that that's the main complaint, but it does seem like it was something that seemed to ride off of somebody else's success in respect to Eastern. Um, uh, religious. So it's a cultural appropriation thing. It's a cultural appropriation. That's, uh, I so, think that's that's probably the best. That and, and, uh, and Druidism and Robin Hood somehow. Well, so the uh, um. Uh, well, he disagrees with you in respect to your Robin Hood and Druidism. Oh well, okay. So that's that is a. I I will send you the link to the documentary. He'll send you a link. Those views are not those views are not like things that I have come up with as at, you know from whole cloth. Mm-hmm. Um, so but it's it the the documentary is like it's called like Factor Myth. It has the guy from Time Team, T- Tony Robinson. Yeah. Uh, the uh, one sec, I will find it. It's still in my history. Here we are. Um, so yeah, but anyway, uh, as far as like the concern that Rock Dog is cultural appropriation, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm sensitive to that, and that's part of why I was really, really to find a uh, there we go, find a. Uh, like an expert to consult mm-hmm. about rock dog. Like that's why I'm like, Hey, uh, 
you know, Tibetan government in exile. Can you, like, tell me what the deal is with Rock Dog? That's the documentary. Um, okay. About Robin Hood. So, but anyway, I, I, that's one I'm pretty sure that uh, Badge will have a look at it. So, anyway, uh, that's why I'm like, tell me what the deal is here. And I wouldn't normally have assumed that it has any basis in, in like, that it, it, you know, deals respectfully with things, except that I have all these people who are afraid to talk to me about it. Like, I have yeah. had strict like policy analysts i've contacted some policy analysts in dc i've talked to professors of various colleges all of whom are like experts on china or i've talked to some translators all of whom are like experts on china and or tibet and i'm like Mm -hmm. tell me about rock dog and they're to a person all four of them have or all five of them have been like i can't and i'm like so it's so conspiracy theory and which, I'm which like, makes Rock Dog so much better, doesn't it? Right, and I'm like, so I'm like, this is the silliest movie. Like, this is a cute and silly movie. And like, nobody wants to talk about it. And I'm like, why will? Why am I? And I'm like, I can buy it at Walmart. It's not like <laughs> it's secret. It's not like it, I'm like, this is absurd. I'm like, someone has to be willing to talk to me about this movie. Are you and a vampire? Guy, right, like the the. <laughs> I talked to, and, and it was so easy to get a hold of this singer who plays him, and that's why I'm, I'm interviewing him later. I'll try to drag him on the show. Yeah, he, yes, perform. he can perform as Bodhi. We'll give him, yes, a, we'll have please. Bodhi be his persona. Yes, please. And, you know, like, or maybe we, I don't know, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do. But, he's like, a, I just think it'd be great. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out a way to actually do that show. But yes, right. please. Um, I I'll, I honestly will talk to him about it. But like, the uh, the thing is, like, I the more I find out about this film, the more curious I become. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, I want to know more. <laughs> like, yeah. that's the movie. I admit that after watching the movie, I was like, that was fun, but it didn't really like. Like I said, it didn't challenge me. And it was kind of, there were some places in it where I was like, oh, I wouldn't have done, I wouldn't have told the story that way. Like the whole, you know, like there were, there were definitely places in the story where I was like, you know, why did this happen? Like the narrator, Yak, I don't really know why he was in the film. Mm -mm. Like, I don't really know. Aside from having a joke, I don't know why he was in the film. And so I, I don't, you know. (laughs) I, and I so, that. but the fact yeah. that everyone's just digging in their heels about telling you about this is just like curiouser and curiouser. Mm-hmm. So, and so one right. of the, yeah, one one of the things that Badge does have to say about this is that he bears no ill point uh, through, although he, as a person who spent the better half of a decade uh, studying Druidism as a final spiritual setting, but beyond the study of a good few religions, this in. Um, we quotation marks um before setting on what is the best for and he he admits to himself the spiritualistic aspect of rock dog by itself requires him to properly research the information that you've sort of put forward Mm -hmm. so you've actually um made him move to a different perspective on this and he will have to research this well i i I appreciate that he is willing to like look into it more do, and do not just judge it choose, on do you think that not just judge it on like what yeah. his initial impression of it was yeah. Um, yeah, yeah now as far as like druidism goes to like my 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 wife is an archaeologist who like he, she has a very different perspective on that like uh, the the like whole study of it because she's she's like worked in ireland as an arche- on, on archaeological digs and stuff and so, like, first of all, like the things that we know about druidism are like highly variable too, from place to place. Mm-hmm. Like, we we don't we know that they did some things some places and some things other places and whatever. It's kind of like Hinduism, where like mm-hmm. Hinduism is like a bunch of different traditions all bound up. And so, like, if you talk to like one Hindu about one about what Hinduism looks exactly like, it'll be different from if you talk to someone else. 
from another region who's a Hindu. Mm-hmm. And so like, it's kind of there, there is always going to be, yeah. a, you know, a, some variability in a, in a yeah, yeah, yeah. belief system like that. And so like, mm-hmm. but like, um, and I admit that Druidism is like I said at the onset of this, like not my background. Yeah. Like this is me studying a thing I have not studied before. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, you know, I, that's part of why I like coming on this show because you guys always have things I haven't considered. And mm-hmm. so like, um, but yeah, like the, the, you know, I'm, I am sure that I will learn more. Like this is the early stages of a book. Like this is what the early stages of a book look like yeah. is I will, I'm like, Oh, well what's, this about like what can i learn from this particular you know set of stories and what it means and stuff like that like where did this come from what does this say about the human condition that Mm -hmm. and so yeah um anyway all right cool do we have any other questions or things doesn't seem to be anything but i do see that badge is uh typing fervently here um (laughs) Okay. But, okay. Well, we'll let yeah. him do that, and then yeah. uh, I'm also. I there was a yeah. pre-release for Lacanazy, but that's not out out yet. Like we had a we had, we released yeah. uh, a bootleg edition. Uh-huh. A boot- of, well, of course, there'd be a bootleg edition of. Lacanazy. And it was an illicit release of it that the that was smuggled out early, and so there were like 200 copies of that, nice. and so we sold those at. Uh, at the at the at MFF, and then the, uh, the what happens there is that they the people who got them got like a secret code for how to get into how to contact like how to meet with people who have it, and I then they are like speakeasy. in this speakeasy, yeah. yeah, to get into the speakeasy, yes. and so that is how we are beta testing. That is our public beta. Nice. But, um, but, but 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 what about us? You guys can get one the next time I mail you stuff. You have a box that ha- is marked South Africa yeah. in my office. <laughs> um, and yeah. so... N- next time... Like, yeah. I'll just... I, I, will, I, I will make sure... You guys will get the real deal. Like, you guys will get the, like, actual release. Nice. <laughs> which will have the... I know. The, uh... The, you'll get it simultaneously. It'll be a simultaneous thing. Um, but the, uh... The... the the thing about it is the 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 official like launch will have like dice that are etched like the Nordgard dice oh, often nice. were and stuff like that. And so like yeah, it's compatible with Nordgard. Oh, you guys can play them together, shuffle them together. Yeah. Mm. And so whatever, uh, you can you can have Gary on your rum running adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Stop pretty sure that bad. Noise. <laughs> 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 What? Okay. He is changing his persona in real time. <laughs> to a cat. To... <laughs> Whatever cat makes that noise. That <gasps> sounds a little bit more like a diesel engine that doesn't want to turn over. Badge is literally biting his hand currently. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, also, Tempo, if um, if that box oh, comes our way again, let's just chat about. Uh, like yeah. me, me paying for a courier because God knows I don't want to take the risk with the post office again. Just BT dubs. Um, firstly, those of you who are still listening, we would like to thank you guys for the donations that you guys have made to the convention. Uh, we will be using those uh, donations as best as possible. We really, really do appreciate everything you guys have been doing. Um, there is honestly a link uh, on the furry.fm website here that says support us next to about us and get into the radio. If you feel that you really want to actually donate to us, I understand that it's not, it's, it's really not compulsory. We, we, we understand that absolutely. Mm-hmm. But if we you do, do have, want to support yeah. us, yeah, we do there is, jobs. yeah, there, there is a, a place that you can do this. And um, we are sort of trying to fund this as much as possible from our own side. But donations would obviously not necessarily go in any way awry. In well, and, to that. and you can use them to, to bring swag to the next event. There's there's nothing better than swag. Very One of the swag. things that we were, oh, oh, I mean, and uh, we were talking about this as a group for the South Africa convention is that we want to, at least for South Africa, 
um, because mailing back to other places is very expensive for us, at least within South Africa. Those of you who are South African who are listening and who may not necessarily be able to make it to the con themselves, um, we are probably opening up the raffle towards people from South Africa so that we can actually get you that kind of it. That that kind of stuff as well. If but, it is, if if it is in any way possible. Yeah, but that information that. will be uh, will be made available as soon as we come to a final conclusion. Currently, that's still as soon in, as we come to a final. Yeah, it's it's really much. It's very very much in the pipeline, but um, irrespective, if you guys want to donate to the cause that we have here, the people that we have here, anything along the lines of that. If you want to donate to Tempo, for instance, Tempo, I'm yeah. pretty sure that you have anything. Uh, yeah, I, exactly. I have a Patreon. That, yeah, Tempo has a Patreon. Patreon will be linked to the furry.fm live chat right now. Um, I will also do my sort of best to put that up as Twitter, uh, Twitter bait. It's Twitterable. I guess. PB what is Twitterable? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we, we like, any kind of any kind of uh there are lots of places that you can throw your money at us yeah. if you desire to and, either of us and, it doesn't necessarily uh, matter it matters that like obviously all of these things just help to bettering what we are able to do and what we are able to want to do um it really does get us that just little bit further to where we want to be most of these things are self-funded and um that's that's one of the great things about the communities that we have mm. is that we're able to not necessarily rely but able to i don't know ask is ask the word well, that, that, that furries like supporting cool yes. furry stuff mm. furries like supporting that's, furry that's great you know like I, I i really that's one of my favorite things about the fandom is that it's so like collective like everybody Everybody, even if all you do is say, this is cool art, I'm going to show it to my friend, you are contributing. Like, in the, in that way. Like, you are making the community a community. And, like, that's really cool. Like, that's that's amazing to me because it means that, you know, it's not just, like, say, Disney, where Disney Disney is the source that just pumps out media and then everyone consumes it in in furry like it's very decentralized and so like everybody's involved like everybody you know the rank and file furries you know are everybody everybody is like one step if they are not a creator themselves they're one step away from one mm. so yeah, uh cool. it looks like he banjo also said thank thank you for entertaining my questions fairly and with respect again like this is the new reality that we live in because of the internet like we want to we have a platform for the first time as a species for understanding and engaging with one another and so that's what i strive to do with the internet like i'm not gonna be like right all the time and you know whatever i'm not gonna know everything and that's because that's just the human condition but like i like being able to both like become wiser about, about stuff and more worldly because of the internet and to help others do the same. Like that's why I've really enjoyed writing for culturally effed. Um, I have a Robin hood episode about how it's not about druidism. Uh, it's about <laughs> how maid Marian and Robin hood are like some of the best relationship advice Disney has ever put out. Interesting. Like, yeah, well, because if you think about it, I, and then we'll wrap up, because this is basically, this time that we're going over is basically compensating, you see, for the half hour that we missed at the beginning. Yeah. That we made the everyone wait. We had, which again, we the, uh, the, uh, you guys can't see, but he's actually bowing right now, um, because he's anime influence. <laughs> uh, the, the... Uh, the the it's it's the the forthcoming episode that I have on for culturally eft about Robin Hood and Marion is essentially like Robin Hood and Marion in Disney's Robin Hood are like they show up at the beginning and they are like totally into each other but they're like you know if the other one has like mm, 
you know, that's, that's okay. I've been, you know, we haven't seen each other in years. Like, well, you know, like they have realistic expectations, <laughs> you know, and then they like get together and they like talk to their friends about their crush, which doesn't happen a lot in movies. Like, you know, like they, they have relatively, they, they are like relatively equal in their relationship. Like, you know, Marion like it's right in there and like throws pies at people during the giant battle, you know? And so mm-hmm. like, the uh like they are friends before they hook up like they don't just fall in love at first sight which is like mm-hmm. a thing in in stories that we love to do because it's a shortcut and we've trained the entire world to be like oh yeah that's a thing that happens all the time mm-hmm. when like how many people do you know who are like how often do you find someone who's like i saw my one true love and boom we both knew like that doesn't it happen kind of does not do yeah right and so the idea that they were friends before and then now they meet again and they're like, whoa, cool. Like, you know, I'm still into you. That's really interesting to me because that's a far more like healthy relationship. Yeah. Like that's how that's teaching kids that like you should, you should totally like choose your romantic partner, like your long-term romantic partner uh, uh, based on like someone you get along with. You know, like s- somebody been, who, uh, you know, go ahead. But you don't find your like the person that you're supposed to be with by just looking at them from across the room. And, yeah. Right. Like that's that's kind of a strange way to have to decide who you're going to be with for the rest of your life. Like that's yeah. kind of a, you know, and it's much more reasonable to be like, I think this person's fantastic. I cannot yeah. I cannot get enough of this person because they are so much fun or we have such good conversations or whatever, because, you know, being, being physically attracted to someone is great, but most of the time, like when you are like in the car driving somewhere together, you're not going to like, it would be unsafe to look at them all the time. Yeah. So, no. So, but you know, having a conversation like you know, that you find engaging and whatever, that can be really rewarding, like long term. Like, oh. and so that's that well, part of why I like yourself. that movie. Anyway, but yes. So that's look for that. Uh, I'll put the culturally effed uh, yeah. YouTube channel here, and then you got we can probably. It sounds like we want to wrap it for the day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're pretty late into the evening. It's ten thirty-six here. We should have ended at least just half an hour ago, but. But this has definitely been fun, though. This has definitely been worth. Yeah, it's, worth the it's definitely been a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. There. So anyway, all right, guys. Um, yeah. I know that this is the first time in South Africa that people have just gone off talking about something. Normally, you guys are very disciplined. Don't oh, only so it's a good. bullet point list. Never has been. Thank you very much. So, South Africa, the Germany of Africa. The the Germany of conversation. <laughs> I thought that was Congo. Uh, I thought that was Namibia. Namibia was a German colony. <gasps> I don't Picking know. Picking intensifies, but any case. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks again for coming on. So it's always I, a massive yeah. pleasure to have you on. Yeah, it's, Absolutely. it has been a pleasure to have you on. I just want to say one more thing from Badge, who's been... Oh, boy. It's yeah. been a roller coaster just... ride for him. Yeah. He just says that it's part of the human condition that even those who we hold in the highest regard is, in fact, still human and willing to engage from there. Mm-hmm. It's not common, um, and it is truly appreciated from people like myself Uh of the consumer on the, or at least a human level. And they say never well, meet your heroes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I actually have had okay luck meeting my heroes. I met James Gurney at Anthrocon one time and that inform informed some of how I approach my own fan base. Cause he's just like the nicest dude. Yeah. Like he's just super nice. Mm-hmm. Like he's not like, he doesn't have an ego about anything at all. He's just kind of like, Oh yeah, I'm glad you like all the dinosaurs I paint. Mm-hmm. That's really good, you know. Yeah. Oh, like your, you know, my my books are the your favorite books of all time. He's like, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and like he, yeah. he you know he totally talked to me for like 15 minutes just because i was some weird cowboy who was fanboying over him the blotch and i went up to him and we all were just like <gasps> <laughs> so like i just want you guys to know like your heroes also have heroes like i yeah. was there with black tegan and kenket and myself and we went up to james gurney and we were like because we we're like you know cool we're cool we're cool people in the furry fandom we're pretty pretty ah! you know, big shots and we're just like oh my god <laughs> I love, how you, I, I love how yeah. you draw dinosaurs <laughs> and I love that the dinosaurs talk <laughs> and we, you know, and like we, we lost all of the cool things we were going to say <laughs> and we were just like, oh, yeah. it's like, <laughs> we, right. We and so speak to you for long enough that that no longer is an influence, but still. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, like don't, that's, so yeah, there are times where like meeting your heroes, like you, there's a, there's a tendency to see the author as like mm. part of the work, like oh, okay, like this is you know, like I didn't, an author just exists to provide the work in a cultural sense, and therefore like doesn't have like any rough edges like they just mm. exist to produce it and we don't like when we see that mm. and like that can happen but it's true like he said on an important point like authors are also just human like yeah you know producers of content like musicians and whatever they're just human and they like and dislike things and they have weird hang-ups and opinions and stuff and like that's just kind of how it goes and yeah. so don't like be afraid to engage with people just because you think they're really cool because sometimes you can have a really cool conversation with them. As we saw tonight, this was a cool conversation. Yeah. This was a really cool conversation. We really do appreciate having you on. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Well, well All right. I think that's, that's about it. But Badge has one more point to make. Oh, come on, Badge. I feel meeting someone I admire was a very positive experience. Having someone you enjoy spending time with on is willing or somebody who's willing to give you the time of day is amazing it really did make a day right yeah i i'm 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 totally flattered as i often am when i talk to you guys like into fans like it's it is one of the most rewarding things in my life that like i can be some weird cowboy in north dakota mm -hmm. who likes talking animals and people are around the world are like i like talking mm -hmm. animals too I like how you write talking animals. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. And so, yeah, like that's, that's why the furry fandom is so central to my work. Yeah. And that's why I'm like here for, I'm a lifer. I'm here forever. Cause I'm like, yeah. you know, that's I'm like, it's fun. And so, um, and it's, it's it promotes cross-cultural understanding. Yeah. Um, well, 2018 so what's, has what... been the most fun that I've had so far at the beginning of a year in ages. And there have been a lot of shit things to happen so far but mm -hmm. 2018 really has done a lot for who i am and what i feel is necessary that's good mm -hmm. so all right well we'll let you guys go to bed yeah well i'm um, still gonna be up for at least the next hour and 20 minutes it seems to uh, play a little bit of music for uh, those who are still hanging on to wakefulness mm -hmm. but yeah so i will i will get you uh, I, I will get you the playlist from Rock Dog. Okay. <laughs> and you can play pop, that. Pop a couple of songs my way, and I'll uh, definitely play them throughout the rest of the podcast and radio so, show. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, but thank you guys. Like, this has been lovely. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that we can have this, like, one, you know, uh, one year later on our previous one. So, because it's been how long? It's been, like, Two years, three years, something like that on here. It's it's been a very very long time that we've had you on now. It's, yeah, it's been a while. So, all right. Well, anyway, but yeah, you, you know, you guys, it's it's always it's always lovely to talk to you guys. Uh, we will have to pick this up when I have found more in my research. When I have when yeah. I have fully plumbed the depths of the the great mystery of our time that is mm. Rock Dog. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Plumb plumb those depths. Oh, the furries mm -hmm. love to. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, and, yeah, thanks again for coming on, Tempo. And uh, thanks, yeah. everyone listening. Apologies again for all the crap. We'll have this sorted out by next week. Until then, see yeah. you guys around. Cheers, guys.
Cheers, cheers. Bye.